so I think that maybe the, the, the interesting thing about the DeFi space this time is that we have the ability to participate and benefit from it. So for example, I mean, we didn't really have many projects back in 2017, 18 in these earlier times where if you participated or other than staking, which is quite passive, if you use the product, you would get rewarded. Whereas now we're seeing a lot of projects now, like you know, Compound, Aave, you know, where if you want to if you want to participate and either withdraw, uh, sorry, if you want to deposit funds, I mean, on Dai, which is a US dollar backed stablecoin, um, you can earn four um, percent as a depositor, which is significantly better than the banking interest rate. Um, yeah, USD yeah. coin, 1.15%. Um, Binance USD, so that's still a USD backed stablecoin, nearly 4%, 3.8%. I mean, these aren't necessarily insane returns in this market, but they're, 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 they're realistic up. returns for a fairly stable asset. Yeah. Um, you know, we're not talking like, you know, 2% a day, like, you know, BitConnect or something. And I think that that's where the real, I mean, you know, and then if you're part of Uniswap and you pull your tokens, you earn part of the fees and you get the benefits of being able to do that. And there's different incentives there. So I think that the way that the market has really shifted is that by participating, you actually get a significant, a significant amount of benefit. Yeah. Um, and in some cases, almost a bigger benefit than if you bought. And we can talk about this a bit later, but like, for example, what, um, what Al's doing, um a l e p h mm -hmm. um what's I, I don't know how to pronounce it properly alf <laughs> um, i, I call it alf but you know I, i'm from the other side of the world to you ALF. So. so that's fair enough <laughs> i'll go with ALF. It, it sounds a lot more um a lot more refined than what <laughs> alf but so with with that though, i mean but it is a mathematical it is based mm -hmm. on a mathematical well, number that i'm i'm not a mathematician so i wouldn't know but no but, sure um, but what you can do with that is, I mean, the good thing about it is if you're staking, if you're providing liquidity through um, through Uniswap, you're getting a bonus from from um, ALF for actually participating and you're getting that every day in tokens. So it's almost like, I mean, and I think the ROI is like 200%. So if you put in a thousand tokens, you don't fourth an extra 2000 over the year, which is brilliant. Yeah, um, I think it's really important that, that uh, you know, reward by participation is something that blockchain can inherently offer, but ha no one really figured it out until the past kind of 18 months. The first example was basic attention token, right? Yeah. So you watch adverts, you get a t it rewards you for your attention. And, you know, that that was that's genius. Like you're paying. But all that is, is, you know, what does that token actually do fundamentally? So this is where the governance side comes in, because now I reward you for your participation, but I also give you a say in future rewards and future technological direction. And I think that's really important. But this isn't just unique to DeFi anymore. There are some teams who are using blockchain to actually reward participation in, you know, you know, normal apps. So one that comes to mind is um, Vid, which is vid.camera, the website, yep. um, and the tokens Vi. And Vid basically is it's like a video journal mobile app, and it pays you every day to use it. So based on your influence and your impact score, you get paid more tokens, and you can withdraw them to your wallet and cash them out. And that is you know a pure example of how social media in in, in its current state can be disrupted. Mm because of blockchain technology because you can reward participation so it's it's really interesting that you use that example because i always talk about using blockchain to reward participants and that's something that no one's really figured out until this whole DeFi wave mm. and i find the governance aspect adds that another layer which makes it even more important because you know things like vi and basic attention token they're really useful but typically that use case would be limited maybe within the ecosystem and you know adding voting power to them tokens would be in my opinion really good i mean mm. vi have added some pretty smart things you can you know but you burn vi to promote your video the same with <clears> that <throat> but but the the governance tokens actually dictating the direction of technology that is really empowering to the average user and mm. you know the liquidity pooling thing is genius i mean there's more liquidity on some of these day one micro cap listings 
on Uniswap than there is for, you know, projects with 50 mil cap over at like some of the bigger exchanges. And that just says, you know, a lot about the state of the, the, the market and how the centralized exchange space has really dominated everyone and everything for so long. And we've seen this massive surge of volume from the DEXs and I love to see it. I've, I, I love to see it. I've been wanting to see it for two years because centralized exchanges have big listing fees and uh you know then they dump your token they take fifty hundred thousand dollars worth of tokens sometimes yeah. up to a million then they dump it on you i mean with the dexes you're really giving the community back the opportunity to you know okay i'll put some liquidity up and then yeah you can and offer you, rewards and incentives yeah. and it just works really well yeah so it's it's actually an interesting thing and i'm just going to I might actually actually have to make a separate video on how a DEX works because that'll be a good 10, 15 minute discussion on its own. But I mean, the good, and I think it's really good that we're, we're sort of, and I think it's on the same note that we've already mentioned um, that, you know, participation is what actually gets you rewards. So, I mean, for example, in a DEX, the fees aren't handled by a centralized body like Binance or whatever. The fees are distributed to people who participate in the pool. So every every dollar of trading fee, on it's not every dollar, is it? It's a what's the percentage of distribution? Uh, I, what, I, I on mean, Uniswap. on standard swaps. On um, unit swap. I'm not sure. On unit I know. Swap. The, I know there's a distribution, but essentially, you know, the pool gets a, a big portion of it. Um, and yeah, so it's absolutely. A, and it gives you, and like you know, the the risk to the investor who is who is pulling uh, is quite low. Uh, if anything, you actually get um, you actually get some downside protection by pulling, um, and uh, and it actually helps you out. I mean, I, I I've been doing it for Ala for a little while, and it's been yeah, just wonderful. But that's also yeah, just like I think value tokens. Yeah, Alf is good because they have a liquidity incentive where they you know fifteen thousand tokens per day are airdropped to the liquidity providers of the pool, which is all automated. So you know if you own ten percent of the pool, you will earn one thousand five hundred tokens, mm -hmm. and I think ten percent of the pool is probably about one hundred and fifty ETH, which you know is quite a lot of money. But it, it you know that's their incentive. The one thing I would say about um, you know being part of a liquidity pool on uniswap for example there are risks when you know a good example is compound when compound listed the guy who gave all his liquidity put all his comp and all his eth into the pool and then comp just climbed from like 50 to 300 bucks and this guy's comp stack was just being sold to fill all the orders so mm. he actually his average exit price was probably 120 and he lost out millions of dollars if he'd have just held them compound tokens. Yeah. So that you know, if it if the price is very aggressive, either up or down, that's when pooling liquidity pooling is quite risky. But yeah. if it's steady and you want to buy things like pullbacks automatically, it will do that. And it's it's all about playing it correctly. And then you get interesting things like balancer where you can do an 80-20 pool. So you know mm. you you're, you've got less risk for your tokens, or if you're very bullish, so, and that that's the interesting part. You know, people are still figuring this out, and there's a lot of because that's actually that's now. actually a useful feature right there. Like just being able to say, you know what, I want to put my ETH in, so I'm accumulating on the downside, yeah. but mm -hmm. I'm not gonna, you know, I'm I'm only risking twenty percent potentially of my tokens on the upside. But I mean, you earn ETH out of it, but it's um yeah yeah, I, yeah exactly, and it depends how bullish you are. On stuff and with with, with Aleph, you know, I I have quite a big chunk of liquidity in the pool. But today, I was like, shit, I've probably lost a bit of money because it ripped. And uh, yeah, you I know, saw that I, in ten minutes. I, I I was away for a few hours. Didn't look at my phone. Came back forty percent. Yeah, so I, I made some F, but I'm not. I'm bullish on F. Don't get me wrong. But um, I, you know, and and the reason I'm giving liquidity also is not just because I like the Aleph price and I think it's going to do really well, but because I want to support the team and because I want to help other people have the liquidity to actually buy it because long term it's better if we yeah. seed liquidity now so there's you know it's kind of it's really interesting because you have people like helping each other out by offering liquidity like oh fine I'll put some into the pool to help other people get in and it's quite a community focused thing the, mm. the whole you know liquidity ecosystem yeah. um people helping each other out and kind of taking one for the team on occasion which i've quite yeah. often seen especially but, within I mean, your personal communities yeah well but i think that's that's a better that's a better alternative than you know basically allowing control of the ecosystem to to a couple of parties and i i think we did have this we have had this conversation before at some point but i mean one of the main things that 
I mean, when I when I started my business, I mean, we're no longer doing it now. But one of the things that we wanted to prevent was the domination of a very a very small number of centralized exchanges because that would be terrible for the the crypto space because it means that instead of having you know a whole lot of the local exchanges that will be operating and turning fiat into crypto and then you then do whatever you do in your journey you'd end up with one player like you know binance that would have offices in every country that could get the fiat into the binance ecosystem that would be this gigantic centralized juggernaut that would dictate pretty much whatever it wanted to do mm -hmm. to to the ecosystem um mm -hmm. and they've done that with a few things i mean i know that back in the day i think a binance this thing was about five million bucks and how restrictive is that to entry and that five million dollars would be raised from the average investor like mom, not mum and dad but your average standard you know ico public sale kind of investor would have to be forking out for that five million so and that wouldn't go to development of technology so i mean this is this is a good evolution um mm -hmm. or Absolutely. maybe it'll encourage a lot of centralized exchanges to think about the way that they practice and actually you know the way that they they earn revenue because yeah, that yeah. scalping of projects is just terrible i mean the average i see i mean like an average DeFi raise now is sign is I mean I haven't seen um, any of the stuff that we've looked at recently being over ten mil like it's all really small amounts of money. Absolutely, yeah. People are. I think generally ICOs and well, I say ICOs. They're not really even ICOs anymore. Most of them are done on dexes like mm. Dolomite or Mesa. But they, they are, you know, they're only raising a few hundred thousand, maybe a million. They're doing bonding curves to let the market decide um, on the on where the price will end up. We talk about that in a minute. But I want to make sure we cover the exchanges thing because the centralized exchange space is definitely, you know, scared right now. Um, they do feel like their cake's being eaten. And I've spoken to some pretty interesting people and, you know, what they're doing now is they see, oh, we'll list the DeFi projects because it will bring volume that we're losing to the DEXs. Mm -hmm. But then, uh, you know, to segue that point, one of the projects that I'm advising, Orion Protocol, <clears throat> one of the reasons I find this really interesting is because they are decentralizing centralized exchange liquidity so you know if you're if you br broker your liquidity up from a centralized exchange you can give that to the orion protocol ecosystem mm. and you can actually earn fees from that so the centralized exchanges can still benefit from that dex volume if they become a broker and a few really big exchanges have already agreed to do that um which i'm really excited about and it's it's because they can clearly see the value when you know these people trading on DEXs, like Binance and KuCoin, they'll never be able to absorb them fees unless there's a protocol that lets them commit their own liquidity to yeah. them, to them DEXs and to them traders. So the, the Orion broker node schedule is very smart. And that's, you know, why I was super bullish on it because the cake is being eaten by the DEXs. And there are some people who are kind enough to find ways to give them some back. And, mm. and that's why I was so bullish on Orion and why I think it's doing so well, because it really serves that, you know, that nucleus point for all the exchange ecosystem in crypto, which yeah. has, you know, historically just been really, really unfair um, and very, very kind of, um, it's been a bit like the Wild West and, you know, a lot of crooks were running centralized exchanges. So I, I really, really like this. It's, this is the point that I've wanted to see us arrive at for, mm. you know, since I've pretty much been in the space um, and yeah. it's really good to see. Well, I know that even when we're doing that crooks, I mean, I'm not making aspersions on owners of certain exchanges, but even I remember pre-regulation, a country like Malaysia, which would not be contributing significant amounts to trading volume globally, had 32 exchanges that applied to get regulated. Then they, then they ended up with three. Mm. Um, and that's sort of what we, that was the trend at the time. And this is globally, like you would have just exchanges popping up left, right and center because they could see the success of Binance and blah, blah. But then, you know, obviously we, well, um, like we a, went through a, a crash and then it's a big it's a big funnel as well because if you you know if you were successful before the bull run and you absorbed all that volume it's very hard to, to lose it once yeah. you're already in this uptrend so it, you know there's like ten thousand exchanges but the bottom nine 
nine and a half thousand. No one, no one will ever trade on. It will all be fake volume. Yeah. Um, and it's a ve- it was a very um, you know competitive space. But the the ironic thing is why Binance was so successful is because they were aggressive with listings. They were inclusive. They didn't moan about having to implement new layer ones. So when Neo came out, Bittrex didn't pay gas for holding Neo on the exchange. Binance will pay that. Now I know there's there's obviously some you know legal discrepancies there as to why Bittrex maybe didn't want to pay dividends, but that's why Binance was so successful early on because they listed everyone and they've got back to this point that you know that they're charging loads of money for listings. They're being really selective. And now they are going to get disrupted by people who are listing more aggressively, being more inclusive, looking at the lower cap projects with really good communities. So it's funny to see Binance come full circle from, you know, being successful because of its inclusiveness to now, you know, being like, no, we're the best. You yeah. can't come on here. And now they're getting their cake eaten by everyone else. Um, well, particularly the DEXs, but I even see some of the centralized exchanges kind of overtaking them with that strategy but i'd probably say that even even the way that they're approaching this space i'd probably say is fairly you know 2000 and pre-2016 thinking i mean they're they've released they've probably got you know they've got a successful credit card that they brought out the crypto one but it's not it's yeah yeah, well it's still basically the binance card is still backed by mastercard and visa which of course is a legacy system that is ripe for disruption by blockchain why they're not using one of the many decentralized payment protocols um which i'll talk about another one i'll do a video on flexa another day but mm-hmm. um but that's that's sort of where i mean it's interesting that they're using legacy systems when they you would think that a company like that would be more forward thinking but yeah absolutely. i mean they are worth billions so you know we can't complain we can't really no absolutely <laughs> You know, Binance have done a really good job. You know, I, I, I just want to stress that they have been incredibly successful. They were v- very aggressive innovators. I just do, I think, was something I've noticed. That's why I brought it up is, you know, their success was largely because of how, you know, accessible Inclusive they were. Was. Yeah. yeah. And, and now they've made it very difficult. And they, you know, they say they don't have a listing fee, but they do. They ask for a big portion of the token supply. You basically at their mercy. And that's why I just love to see these DEXs just absolutely crushing it and mm. stealing all the volume. But, you know, as we discussed earlier, this is still a small portion of the market and they do. we do still need to keep stealing more of their customers. Mm. Well, that, that's probably why. Go, go, go. No, I was just going to say, I do think that... Um, the way that we do that is to keep implementing and improving things like MetaMask, um, Uniswap. You know, the UX and Uniswap is pretty good now. Mm. Better than... Oh, if anyone remembers using that, that was just an absolute mess. But it feels very similar, you know, in respect to the to the gains and and, uh, mm. you know, and things like that. So It, could, so, yeah, it couldn't I be think... as retro as Curve. Curves, oh, curves oh. you wise just... <laughs> Curve is curve is a crazy UI, but you know I think that's kind of a that's intended. A off. It, it very intended, mm. um, but you know that's interesting because that brings me to a point that we didn't cover about yield farming. So I'll just go over it quickly because it is. Uh, no, we'll, we'll we'll cover yield farming because I've got bonding curves and yield farming oh. is something that we can talk about at the end. There we go.